Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzow. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Fahey, joining me as ever, a complex beautiful, gorgeous being, a man named Aaron Joseph Peter. That is me. That is my earthly name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I have gone by other names. Yes, mythological. Krishna, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jehovah, Elohim. Yeah. Uh, ja. Uh, ja. Kalel. Kalel. Yeah, mm-hmm. Ja from reggae. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do now in this in this incarnation I do go by uh AJP. AJP. <laughs> uh, emphasis on the P. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, it's number 1 baby. Uh, oh, new shirts. Oh, we'll yep. get to we'll get to that. We'll yeah, get to first shirt. let's sorry, introduce sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. I'm very excited. Uh, another I'm very excited. Avatar of the Divine. Yeah. To my right, my left. Matthew Bruso. Oh, hi. Yes. Thank you. Uh pleasure as always. Mm. Consummate good boy. Mm. Knock it off! Knock mm. it off! Mm. We're on video now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of weird to remember that our our beautiful friend Laura Crawford. Yes, gorgeous young lady. Thank you, Laura. Crawford. Talented. Yes. She yes. Uh, edits together Very these funny. episodes. Mm-hmm. The animals, uh, the the media episode, so funny. She threw on that every conceivable animal at every the end. Conceivable. Oh, fantastic. it took me by surprise, and I just burst into <laughs> laughter. Every conceivable. Every yeah. Animal. Anything you can conceive. Rhinos. Well, we maybe. never made a Noah's Ark joke, did we? Uh, oh. No, I don't think we did. No, that's I, in my I, Bible. I, I, I think yeah. it's probably best that we didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, John, I do want to commend you on that episode for really glossing over the uh, the, the the real <laughs> depressing <laughs> nature of her end of life Ooh, with yeah. Bodil Uensen. Yes. I went back, and I was like, I'm going to watch these fucking videos. I'm going to watch her blow a boar. I'm going to yeah. find all about this nasty girl's life. And then I just, like, was weeping. Yeah, it's really like, sad. oh, wow. She well, really, the thing, the, really, really went down yeah. went off the deep end toward the end. Uh, booze and neglecting well, the thing her is, animals. I know that, so much, that cetera, cetera. I'm springing this stuff on you guys unawares. And I know I was like, I'm going to go through this, 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 you know, sad ending. And Aaron's going to be really bummed out. Mm-hmm. I'm, and, a sen- and, I'm a sensitive and, guy. And I, d- I didn't want to, I, d- I didn't want to spring it on you. But also, you did a great job because I also want people to really go and look into this shit themselves. Yeah, exactly. yeah, I mean, it's really fascinating. Part of the joy is uh, just getting people to go down the rabbit holes I've already been down. Yeah. Man, there were some rabbit holes. Uh, yeah, there were, there were. Just um, holes. Mm-hmm. I. Um, I do want to uh, say uh, profiles and eccentricity podcast at gmail dot com, mm-hmm. PayPal twenty five dollars, U S mm-hmm. domestic mm-hmm. for the piss. It's number one T shirts made by Graveyard Shift screen oh. printing. Um, it, uh, it, it's it, life changing. Get oh. real, people. Yeah. If you're not wearing, I mean, what are you doing? Yeah, and the next shirts are just going to be better and better too. But this one is. Probably our bet. I mean, I don't know. Our shirts are so good, the, but they're all great. Right? Yeah. How and Joe's you... going to a new level of screen printing with these shirts too, as far as like how he's blending colors and mm. stuff. It's gonna look really amazing. It kind of has a look of like those old time baseball cards. Yeah, like, he uh, spent a lot yeah. of time making it look retro, yeah. which is really cool. Um, and it's just offensive enough while not having like a fuck me on your shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right, right. Not every. It's you know, not everyone. It's can as wear it's, it's it, but... like the seven up yours shirt. Pretty much, and that's, it's, on, it's on that level, mm-hmm. right? Hey, it's still, it's still a little, a little fun and. It's wholesome. still people in a hammock getting sprayed with a hose. <laughs> yeah, 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 and you know, um, your five year old's still gonna get it. Yeah, you know, they're gonna find it. Gonna appreciate it the most. Yeah, 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 and then as he grows older, he'll appreciate it on other levels. Mm-hmm. It's it's so complex. It's nuanced. It's rich. It's full body. It mm. is. Yeah, we're really, mm. I mean, really, you know, going someplace yeah. intellectually. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, um, it's not wrong. No. No, it's right in it, every what, conceivable what, what, sense. But it, it, it's what's wrong <laughs> is that you don't have the shirt. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, that right. is wrong. And um unconscionable. It, it is. Yeah, and there's really no P shirts in general. Nope. So I'm happy to sell this shirt to the general public that mm-hmm. just supports P, not even, you know, you don't mm-hmm. even have to like the podcast. No. It's, right, you know, yeah. I just want to mm-hmm. But you got to you got to give P its credit, you know. Right, yeah. Glad yeah. someone is. Just remember that we're the ones that came yeah, up with it. Of course. You know, mm-hmm. Nice and, you know, Roman launderers. Yeah. The funny thing about those piss shirts is you can wash them in piss. 
Isn't that so funny? <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah. You know the best way to get the piss out of them? <laughs> piss right back on them. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Just like, just drink a lot of water. The world is a It sounded like a multi, multi-level marketing. <laughs> Did you say the word? <laughs> <laughs> um, but there are some things I just want to tell you guys about that are, like, you know, super sad, right? Yeah. And one of them is addiction. Yep. And yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm really saddened by, like, you know, uh, like, the intervention shows and stuff like that. <laughs> and this is, like, absolutely yeah. the saddest one I've seen yet. I just want to, before I get into the main profile, I want to show you this. Uh, because... This is tragic. <laughs> I'm Ava Fox, and my daughter Mandy has an extremely large addiction to <laughs> Fuck you. I don't even know, like, how this happened. She's rubbing I her pussy on the toilet. I don't my anus, so I don't know where she got this from. Mandy had a pen up her anus. Her, it's in her anus. A pen. Is that my August Ames? My favorite Rest in peace. pen. I'll put anything My favorite. My pen 15? I started off with a pen because I didn't know, you know, how deep I could go, really. Oh, man, you used. I was like, cucumber up my butt because it was bigger. And it yeah, like no, it checks out. I love the, <laughs> the, the black and white recreation. <laughs> yeah. Dramatization. Really Music. Mandy has a cucumber <laughs> up her anus. A cucumber. My favorite cucumber. <laughs> now I have all these veggies. I get so wow. paranoid. Yep. I have to, like, double clean them because I don't know if you know they've stuck them up her anus. <laughs> It's so disgusting. I don't know where she got this from. I was walking into the store. Room and <laughs> she bent over. Man, it's good. You, it's tight. you gotta clean those guys. Up her anus. Again, something else <laughs> up her anus. Your grocer hates I'm this guy. About her secret, I was blown away. It's Xander Corbett. Then my mom had a solution. And I love my sister, and I do anything to help her anything that's right oh, this wow. kind of seemed like it might be crossing some lines you think <laughs> look look she rips it out my dildo my she, she pulls it out of her ass <laughs> so oh his he didn't have a smaller cock to use Kyle. oh the fade fade to color mm. they go to Fantastic. color yeah mm. It's like Wizard of Oz. <laughs> so she's got, yeah. she got the dildo up her ass. Mom calls out Kyle, well, brother. He's, he has an anal fixation. <laughs> <laughs> How am I supposed to help with that? The yeah. only way to help out. What's with the teeth? The only way. The poster's above the two stags. Look, uh, I'm, tired, I'm tired of walking in on her. I caught her with a pen. I caught her with a cucumber. I just caught her with my dildo. My dildo. <laughs> I can't put that up there, right? I'm all of us. What the hell? I'm all, I'm all, all of us. We're a family. We need to help out. We're a family. Yes. Oh, oh my God. God. No, that's crazy. <laughs> she's there just she, pushed uh, out. Yeah, legs up. That's crazy. Yeah, she's, she's still. <laughs> yeah. She's still got her ass. She's very relaxed right she's now. She's very vulnerable. Come on. Get over here. Actively Come holding on. her what legs up. This, this, he just pulled it out. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to. So oh, she's going to okay. suck it for a minute, and she's like. Oh, well, Dad says. She's like, I don't know about this at all, you know? And, um... Well, oh, she yeah, it's just and, an uh, anal intervention. Yeah. It's, it's, it is, yeah. And then, um... Does she get know. better? Well, she gets really into it, which is hmm. funny. Well, you know? You know? Well, she's fixated. Yeah, you gotta go off the deep end before you can come back. You know, it's kind of like when, um, you know, like, your dad catches you smoking a cigarette and he makes you smoke a whole pack. <laughs> right, right, or makes you, it's fu- like that, makes you fuck his dildo. This is, <laughs> this is all the nutting and stuff. Ooh. Oh, it's POV now. Oh. I'm the stepbrother. I'm yeah. Now. Wow. Wow. I'm family. I'm Jon hey, Snow. We are all family. <laughs> what you mean I have to hold on? This goes back to intervention. Mm-hmm. <laughs> back to black and white. Help really good. <laughs> <laughs> it felt really good to help her out like this. She doesn't um, say. She's wearing the same shirt. I finally got rid of her. Mom thinks it's yeah, a. I, I don't know. I just I can't help but put things in my butt. Hey, yeah. it feels that's really life. good. <laughs> it <laughs> feels really yeah. good. What are you gonna do? I hear you. I just really like it, dude. I'm sorry. You know, like, what do you She's want? She's very remorseful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you yeah, tell it affect her a lot. Isn't that that's so great? It's very, that's tough. it's dude, very stupid. Dude, I was dying, dying, you were dying laughing. You say. So funny. 
a Mani Muse, what a star. Great job. She's uh, a maniac. Everybody yeah. all around, great job. Yeah, uh, oof, man, she is crazy. I mean, what what is it with the, the constant use, use of the word anus, too? Yeah. Well, it's the, that's the medical term, <laughs> yeah. John, you know? Mm-hmm. I told everybody about it at work. I was like, man, I saw this porn. <laughs> I was like, she was all she's about got the, the anus. Mm-hmm. She's got the yeah. cucumber up the ass. She doesn't know which vegetables to wash. She's a grocer's kid. It's no. her dildo. Yeah, the well. brother. The brother's like, ah, I don't know. And he's all about helping out. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. They always they always have to get convinced really fast. Yeah. There's never really a fast. Th- yeah. there's never a sleep on it. But as his mom said, he had a big cock. So you yeah. know, you gotta use it, I guess. Hey. Just yeah. can't waste it. He go back to the thing, and it's like. Dude being like, it was great. And the mom being like, I'm really glad I fixed everything. Mm-hmm. And then the girl just being like, yeah, I just really love shoving shit up my ass. It feels really know good. Want, man. Yeah. I don't know, you know? <laughs> Isn't that an absolute delight? It's very, it's like, I, that's fun. I think fun. it's wonderful. Yeah. I think it's wonderful. It's quite good. Yeah, you know, our generation used to have to go sneak out into the woods or behind a bush. Right. Or a good w- w- corner. Oh, yeah. Or just a, really, a put corner. a dunce cap on. And, yeah. and, and find a, a, an old, soggy, ripped out page. Rained from, on. Yeah, ra- nutted on. Woods porn. Woods porn. Yeah. I never, and, I never and found it. And you just had to just deal you with. You lived in Massachusetts. There was nothing but woods. You should have had porn up to your fucking. Uh, we, we had dial up in 96. I could download a picture. Uh, just slowly, I'd wait five minutes for a picture to load. Yeah. Rich, rich folk. <laughs> I, I didn't also, my brothers had a swank. <laughs> Let me tell oh, you. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's very good. And That's now, so before you had to, you know, you had to deal with whatever second, fourth, fifth hand smut was oh, hanging yeah, around yeah, yeah. in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Or, or lack thereof, the right. Sears catalog, right? That right. was a big thing. Did, I mean, it worked. Bra section. Yeah. I didn't know any better. And, and now, you can just put a string of words together, uh, anal vegetable intervention, Three seemingly unrelated AVI, words. Baby. Yes, yeah. And there is a f- uh, genre dedicated to only that. Yeah, it is. I tell you, I did the the cum wiggers. <laughs> what is is that a marathon? Yeah. What is that, Jody? Yeah, I was driving somewhere one day, and I just go to my. I went in my head, cum wiggers, <laughs> and then I was like, that's around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then yep. I, I went to the, hit the internet, right. and I found uh, Wigger World, <laughs> and that's uh, just a really shitty thing yeah, where. Yeah. Bunch of uh, quote unquote wiggers mm-hmm. having uh, gnarly sex. A lot of gay porn with the uh, is that, is that about the, right? the, the W word involved. Now, now, do they, <laughs> does it involve any sort of uh, Nazi hot tubbing? <laughs> no, no, no. It's just you know, it's yeah. Another, how is that not true? Another one of those things where you know, like uh, you want to bang the uh, the scary guy, you know. Like the a lot of gay porn is like oh, yeah. Nazi skinheads and yeah yeah that's what I'm know. getting at yeah yeah oh, you know the, it's about conquering uh, your fear by the, fucking it in the ass the thugs <laughs> yeah and you're kind of like secretly hoping they're self loathing or yeah, whatever you yeah know. no I get it mm. um, believe me I get it <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, uh, trust me <laughs> new, new world order <laughs> um yeah uh so yeah there is something you can find for everything yeah but I mean yeah back in the day it was pretty it was pretty desperate yeah. now we've outsourced our imagination yeah I remember like certain episodes of Cheers sending me off. Oh, I was, like, yeah. I was like, oh, Diane wore this top in this mm. one episode. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, she, was, she knew her books. That was enough to take care of me when I was like 11 or hey. whatever, you know? I've, t- I've told you about the, like, just finding a story where someone just wrote about words. Having, yeah, yeah. It was just like the words mm. were, the mm. words did it. Literatica, yeah. Yeah. Mm, with the, the, the capital B looks like a butt. <laughs> Well, I mean, all these people are right. All, I mean, I'm guessing a lot of Harry Potter fan fiction is like shit like that. Oh huh? my God, do I have some fan fiction for you? Oh, guys. that's yes, do you? I do. I think, we've... I've to- I think I told you about mm-hmm. it. I could probably pull it up now, but I, no, maybe pull it we'll up, save pull it. it. Up, pull it up. Okay. But just a quick teaser. Uh, it is. <sighs> it is hot fan fiction of. Uh, Cube. Uh, what? <laughs> Who's cute? It, it, it is Chris Evans and Tom Hiddleston, my two husbands, fan fiction. Funny. Yeah. So is there a wand in there? Uh, no. There's no. Well, there's no wand, but there is. Are they? Are they their respective characters? Are they Spider Man and Captain America? Uh, no, oh, no, no, wait, no, right, no. Tom Hiddleston is Loki. Loki. It's yes. Loki. And no, it's it's actually it's Chris Evans. He's like. <laughs> It's actually it's Chris Evans, not <laughs> the actor. Yeah, the one Chris, that was at my birthday. Yes, yeah, this that's right. Captain America saying happy yeah. birthday to you at right. Taylor's Steakhouse. Yes, we happen to be at the steakhouse, and Chris Evans. Um, he is looking great. 
Yeah, and oh. he was singing to me on my specifically. Yes, yes, on my your 30, day of birth, thirty mm, fifth or wow. something. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was really hot. So was, br- it was oh. really hot. I was too afraid to look at him. Aaron saw him, and I was too oh, afraid to look dude, at him. I, I like I, I hung out in the bathroom for an hour just hoping he would go in there. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I made a hole in the stall. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, CBC check bear camera. Yeah. <laughs> So so I'll I'll bust out that fanfic maybe uh maybe on a Patreon or something like that. That would be a fun yeah. one. It's like forums, forums oh, yeah. of like my to oh yeah, God. and then that shit is like also like for sale on Amazon for a dollar. Yeah, yeah. Kindle, mm-hmm. Kindle download, yeah, yeah, all yeah, that yeah. shit. Yeah. How's that going? I don't think it's going great. Do you think it's it's more money than we would suspect? If it's more than zero, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they were gonna write it anyway. Yeah. So yeah. At least maybe they can make a buck. Isn't off that of... amazing though that there's like now products just on the market that there's no value check it's just like you can just go oh you write a book about vaccines being fake and put it on amazon Mm -hmm. and yeah make a couple bucks so you can really just be like not sued somehow for writing you know whatever uh god bless the first amendment i guess i guess yeah Yeah, and then uh you know uh, kind of abusing it 50 shades is is based on twilight fan fiction Mm -hmm. or started as yes yeah they just uh they just did control f and deleted every word that says vampire right yeah so i mean i think it's actually doing pretty well that's Uh, my guess yeah it's it's called um uh (laughs) father a tom hiddleston and chris evans fanfic School, and then it's full of typos. Of, of course, course, of course, perfect. No one double checks their work on these yeah. things. Uh, a squeal of Father Marilyn begin begging. It's it's all fucked up. Uh, it's probably written by. A, I think it's supposed to be a sequel of Father. This is book two. It's typed left handed because the guy's jerking off yeah. so much. <laughs> Marilyn begins to find out the truth about growing up and living with two of Hollywood's finest men. Marilyn? Her, her dad being the world famous villain Loki and her husband being the star spangled man. <laughs> Oh. oh, she didn't realize that until, until later. Here, here, here. I'm just going to show you what like, the book cover looks like. Oh, my God. That's Even the spacing of the letters is just poorly done. It's really bad. That, when are we going to get to like AI writing porn for us? Oh, I can't <laughs> wait. I think they already are. They probably man. already are. Yeah, it's that good racist <laughs> shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bolted up right in bed. Thank goodness it was all a dream. Chris began to stir and turned to me, pulling me closer. Hmm, what is it, babe? <laughs> Chris asked. I rubbed, oh, did he? I rubbed my eyes and then placed my hands on his chest. Nothing. Let's go back to bed. I suddenly heard Daisy and got up. You might want to get some clothes on, Chris mumbled as his head was buried in the pillow. Oh, yeah, I think I should. I nodded and quickly got dressed. Slowly, I walked to the room, <laughs> looking into Megan and Boston's rooms. Thank goodness they were heavy sleepers. Or thank goodness they are safe. <laughs> I'm going to keep going for a second here. Okay. When I got into Daisy's room... Like, they have names for the kids that don't exist. God when almighty. I got into Daisy's room, she was wide awake, wiggling around in her cot. Oh, God uh. almighty. Princess, what is it? I asked her gently, picking her up and gently rocked her. Oh, I gently that's placed really, a kiss. That's a lot of gentle. I, I gently placed a kiss, kiss on her forehead, pacing around the room. She missed you, Chris said, walking in half naked. I laughed quietly as I turned to him. Daddy is funny, isn't he? I asked our infant. God she almighty. was so cute, I wanted to melt. Chris's arms wrapped around my waist and kissed my shoulder. She's going to look a lot like you. Hmm. Yikes. He's ma- he said, making me laugh. I ho- <laughs> he said, making I- me laugh. I hope not. Look at me, and then you. Uh. What? Yeah, what? Like, both, like, Chris turned me around. actors? <laughs> Chris turned me around and pegged my lips. Pegged? I- <laughs> this is the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it great? Oh. He's, doesn't it become amazing? Yeah. The worse it gets? Yes. Yeah. 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 It's well, well, some nice. people have no don't people have any shame? Yeah, well it's like, you know it's like when, you know, like a stoner's telling you something and you're like, This is so bad, it's amazing. Yeah. You know? You have nice boobs, his penis said to me, winking. <laughs> So How they, <laughs> these people put some thought. Yeah, into, a, a, what would it be? A like? small amount. But I mean, take take a, a writing one hundred and one course to really 
try to get good at it. You spelled sequel wrong. It says squeal. <laughs> it's a squeal. <laughs> no, no, that was on purpose. <laughs> Shut squeakle. up, pig! <laughs> squeakle. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so I'll, I, I'll find I'll find some more uh, uh, excerpts of some tease. great great fanfic. Good yeah, tease. we should write some. We should write oh, some. Oh yeah, we should write some homoerotic, no, pansexual. Yeah, pans uh, rams. Pans pans <laughs> ram fan, fanfic. Pans ram. Great segue. Wow. Yikes. Uh, I got into pans ram from an uh, underground zine called Answer Me, mm-hmm. and uh, it was really you know slickly produced and uh the guys that that made it there was this couple uh jim and debbie goad oh they hate each other right no they they uh they were married and they were they were quite deeply in love they were uh very hateful people though um and in the second issue they did a, a serial killer thing and they got really really into um pansram specifically because they called what they were doing with answer me misanthropology Wonderful, and it was really like just this exercise in. Um, they met outside of a Johnny Thunders concert, and he saw Debbie, and Debbie was just talking about how humanity should be eradicated mm. in like a thick Brooklyn accent, <laughs> and uh, she's like, "Yeah, we should all just drop a fucking bomb on them. These fucking people that stink, they smell." fucking pigs and he's like i am in love with this woman <laughs> she sounds like a character in like escape from new york or something and he's kind of like a rednecky uh you know like you know beating a lot as a kid kind of dude and um he's uh he's uh in they they're in la and it's uh like 1990 when they they meet and they get together and they start they start writing stuff and um he's so into how hateful she is mm. uh and He's like just deeply in love with her, and uh, he feels like for the first time it's like there's anybody else that's with him, mm. and it's like them against the world kind of thing. Mm. And they start doing this zine called Answer Me. And what I think they're really doing is you know, there's like kind of like so much hostility that you, you feel like underneath it, there's like some kind of sensitivity. Um, there's like you know some kind of babiness or something that's making them like lash out. Yes, yes. They feel they uh, they feel like a deep injustice has been done or they've been hurt so bad. Yes. Right. No, I understand. But, uh, but also some of the acting out is um, makes them feel childish because they don't have control over it. And right, and they um, get very much into kind of like taking control. And answer me is one of these things that is pre-internet um, when you had underground publishing. You know, the, the zine world was really fascinating to me because I'm so into miscellany as the show shows mm-hmm. and getting down weird corners. And, you know, you would you would have these uh, zines that were like Fact Sheet 5 where all they did was review other zines. Mm-hmm. And then it would be this guide to showing you weird stuff. And some of it was like, you know, stuff you could guess. Like, here's the guy doing something about the paranormal or, you know, bondage, sex culture. But then, like, what do you even call Answer Me? All it is is just a thing that's hateful and in- inciting hatred mm. and kind of gleefully talking about how terrible people are mm-hmm. uh, with nuance and yeah, understanding. Yeah. Yeah. Like, there's things where they're writing about the worst thing in the world, but to them it, it's like, well, this is where humanity actually lives, yeah. is when they, like, they hated the, the privileged society and easiness and mm-hmm. stuff like that so if anything was like extreme they were like all right well this is like a living breathing thing this is like a visceral this is like where the action is so everything they do is like that i have two questions uh one what year is this 1991 the first issue of okay. answer me comes out and what is the significance of the title answer me is is like uh it's basically based on why are you so stupid oh okay uh, yeah. Uh, and so they, something that would be yelled at a, a kid me, in an abusive fuck. relationship. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really hateful, um, violently mm-hmm. so. Um, Jim Goad was like, yeah, I think without this, I definitely could have killed somebody. Hmm. Um, without it? Without without the outlet. Mm-hmm. And his name's Goad? His name is Jim Goad, yeah. And uh, him and Debbie got married like in like a, a shitty little trailer park. And um, then they lived in L.A. And it's, it's, it's funny seeing it through the prism of L.A. Mm-hmm. too. In the first issue, they do a thing where they go down the Sunset Strip, like, all the way, and talking about how scummy L.A. is and how it's walking into one different area of depravity after another, like, all the way to the beach. Mm-hmm. 
it was like 24 hours and this is like back in the early 90s and stuff when there was like you know like rioting and you know a lot of craziness a lot more prostitution and crack yeah a lot of scary stuff and so it was them kind of like you know just being like we're just going to show you just on a walk in our town yeah. how deplorable humanity is yeah. section by section yeah you know and um they're just like really into anything that is you know uh extremely countercultural and anything that is uh, like kind of painting how people are terrible mm -hmm. and they are nobodies like and they made this very slickly produced zine and they they jim was like i didn't know what zine culture was he's like i got into it totally ass backwards i made a magazine what i considered a magazine and then people told me oh this is a zine this is like underground publishing and he was like oh well i was just trying to make like it's like, hateful shit. <laughs> so, no, I mean, something that I thought would be, you know, right. like on a newsstand. Right. You know, and so people kind of attacked him for like how it was really good and stuff. Cause, oh, because it was a try hard. Oh. You know what I mean? And he was like, fuck you. I'm yeah. trying to do a good job. Right. And uh, both of them are very, like, uh, kind of entitled about how smart they are. They're like, yeah, we're saying like the worst things in the world, but like, find a typo in here. Mm. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. um, tell me this isn't really well written. Yeah. And um, the two of them are just writing these things uh, that are, are so hateful that it's just like you kind of can't stop looking at it because it's such a shit show. Mm. And you uh, in, in the course of an issue, you go further into their minds of how they see the world. And that's what's so alluring about it. Um, so it and they get amazing interviews. Like, they're, like I said, they're nobody, but they just like are really tenacious about, you know, getting people down and talking to them. And, uh, uh, like, uh, it's incredible. Do you, you know? Do you, do you remember the first article you read or the first thing you read in it that... I read about Answer Me first, mm -hmm. and it was kind of already a legend then in the 2000s. And then at a wonderful record store in Allentown, Pennsylvania, called ah, Double, okay. Double Decker. Mm -hmm. Incredible record store, man. So much shit. So cheap. I've never been to a better record store. Um, I saw issue number two, and that came out in 1992. And I just read it cover to cover, and I was like, this is the most insane shit I've ever got. And they lauded Panzram so much. Uh, they were so into his misanthropy mm -hmm. and him saying, like, everybody deserves to die, including myself, very much. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were so into that. Yeah. Uh, that issue also had interviews with Anton LaVey uh, from the Church of Satan, mm -hmm. the Ghetto Boys. Uh, Jim Goad was mad into hip hop, and he talked about like later on. Jim Goad would go down into this thing about you know he would get really into like hating PC culture, obviously, and uh, he wrote the Redneck Manifesto mm -hmm. and how he, he believed hillbillies became like the acceptable scapegoat uh, for you know being shit on by the politically correct left. Mm -hmm. And there's some truth to that. Oh, he's way ahead of his time. Um, but you know, then like you get so. You know, annoying. That's kind of, all right. Well, settle down. Yeah. You're you're not now. You're like pigeonholing yourself as just the redneck guy. Yeah. And it's like, I thought this was about hating everybody. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, like your joke. It's like um, equal opportunity. Yeah. Racist? Like you know, hate everybody. Yeah, equal. People will disappoint you no matter hmm. what. Yeah. No matter what. Right, right. Just get to know somebody. You'll find a reason. Right. So um, that was like you know kind of like his his you know like the latter half of his career and he's, he is a great writer there's no absolutely no doubt about it and uh him and him and debbie were just so so hateful together but i'm really i really admire like them getting interviews with uh al sharpton and wow. and uh you, you know they have the prank called a jack kevorkian and wait what was their prank called a jack kevorkian <laughs> oh, dude all right oh so <laughs> gotta bust out the bible <laughs> Oh, so you got a big book of Answer Me over there. This is all four issues of Answer Me, including the last issue that um, – wow. it used to be Answer Me, the first three. And then it was the, – the, the, this recently came out, Answer Me, all four issues. And this was given to me by my best friend in the world, Mr. Joe Latchett. Uh, mm. Joe Latchett. Um, and uh, he knows how much uh, I'm into this stuff. Uh, the last issue basically put them out of business because they were uh, – uh, they had a, a lawsuit. Uh, it was the rape issue. Mm. And the rape issue. Yeah, and the rape issue had like a cartoon illustration of a waitress serving a gigantic hot dog with the word rape written in mustard on it <laughs> with her name tag saying, hi, I'm asking for it, and she has a black eye. And um, 
Yeah. Show me. <laughs> that was um. That was uh, that was the final issue. You Hi. say this was <laughs> the name tag is hi. I'm yeah. asking for it. Hi, I asked for it oh, actually. Shit. Um, you say this oh, was we trouble got some for it. Oh, so that's the back oh, of the third neat. issue. That's really cool. Uh, which and they got the horny uh, cartoon dogs, dog in the background. Yeah. Back of the third issue is uh, uh, Hitler naked on the cross with uh, SS guys around him. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, the cover the cover of issue four. Oh, you can kind of see your nipples through a shirt. Yeah, which landed them the uh, and you see all these jackal dogs in the back, yeah. like jackal. Um, With the Hitler thing, did they um, were they sympathetic to Nazis in any way? Or? No, the thing is, is that they were um, they were very sympathetic to hatred. Oh, okay. okay. So it's like um, <laughs> they were. Uh, they just said they just had a lot of good ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. well. <laughs> So they start off, and um, the issue one just has uh, an issue with uh, Russ Meyer talking about his tit movies, right? No big deal. Uh, Timothy Leary. You get a Timothy Leary interview, right? Um, Kid Frost, uh, gangster rapper, right? So Public Enemy interviewed in the first issue. How did they? Just That's what I'm saying. It's like you got to admire, like, they, they got these interviews. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about, he's like, the first time I heard – how hateful uh, Straight Outta Compton was. He's like, it like blew my head off with mm -hmm. the severity. Mm -hmm. And that was like, when it, it's like, that's where you're like, I don't really think they're racist. I think that you're just so into um, human conflict being the signifier of how unworthy they are of life. Mm -hmm. So even in the rape issue, it's like that. Like they talk about like, you know, prison rape and stuff and, and just how horrible everybody is. And, you know, trying to be offensive, of course, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, but they are also like sincere. It's not just trolling. Mm -hmm. Some things are done humorously to offend, um, but there is a lot of stuff where they. I mean, they really are horribly hateful. They interview Iceberg Slim in the same issue too. The the famous the pimp, pimp. Yeah, you know, Chappelle talks about. Um, and then they have uh, their their rants, you know, which is uh, twenty four hours on the Sunset Strip, right? Um, uh, they do ma masturbation in literary history, which is go fuck yourself. Uh, uh, Twelve steps to hell, shitting on uh, recovery culture, death, oh. death in Bakersfield, um, people ruin everything, and babies are dirty. Those are all <laughs> they are. in there, and that's the first issue, right? They're not wrong. So then you get to the second issue, the first, the first issue I go, and they they raise the stakes, right? And it's uh, Anton Lavey. Mm -hmm. Uh, then you have uh, the Ghetto Boys, Il Duce from um, uh, The Mentors. He was the guy that uh, he, he basically was like trolling that dumbass Nirvana interview about saying Courtney Love asked him to kill <laughs> Kurt Cobain. Um, he's like, yeah, she gave me 50 bucks or whatever. And they put it in the documentary like he's being like he's not fucking with them. Like it's so <laughs> dumb. Al Goldstein from Screw Magazine. Mm -hmm. So they got another porn thing there. Uh, David Duke from the KKK interviewed. Um, Wow. And then, you know, people doing, like, you know, shitty kind of, like, schlocky movies. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I'm interested in that David Duke thing. Like, is, are the, do they mock him? They <laughs> kind of can do that. Yeah, they're they're almost, yeah. Like, they're kind of talking about how he sort of started to sell out and become, like, a more, like, slick politician. He's like a pop racist. In the 90s. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah how come you don't hate everybody? Or <laughs> yeah. he's like, you know, David Duke's <laughs> position shifted to... I just really like white people. Right, it's right, not so right. Much about it's, I hate everybody else. It's just that I really love whites. Yeah, yeah. Which is like you know, um, kind of the thing they were attacking too, which is um, the the PC culture of uh, euphemistic language. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, you you can't be anti-abortion. You have to be pro-life. Right. Right. You know, or you can't be you know fucking pro-abortion you have to be pro-choice right so he's not he's not anti-black he's pro-white it's it's that kind he's... of you know fucking around yeah. that they really attack a lot mm -hmm. in pc culture which is you know just not even as insane as it is now right, right. well it, in, during that time there was that the the beginnings of it and you had the early 90s was the beginnings of pc culture then it died down and now it's now it's yeah. back again right like a hydra yeah, you know, oh, they're not Nazis. They're 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 white nationalists. Right, right. So they do in this in this issue too, and these these are thick, you know, big issues, right? They do a uh, a uh, hundred uh, mass murderers uh, and serial killers are all profiled. That's where I found out about Panzram, mm -hmm. and they're really 
written with the glee of somebody that enjoys uh, horror and and terror and kind of makes fun of it in this very dark humor way. And that's what was so alluring about Answer Me. It's like they were just they were just making fun of. I mean, if you're into dark humor like I am, it was like Answer Me was really great. I mean, these guys, it's like uh, so far ahead of their time that uh, this is this magazine could could uh, cancel out so many podcasts. It's right. on its own. <laughs> yes. shut, shut up, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't mean this one. <laughs> oh, okay. We talk about sports too. Oh, cool. But they're doing. Um, uh, they do a thing on uh, Vietnamese gangs in America. Um, how there's uh, kind of like a uh, gore, like uh, magazines out of uh, Mexico. Like mm. they, they would do, like you know, kind of like Museum of Death level, real life gore from murders in Mexico and sell them in oh, wow. in magazines. Really gnarly shit. And, you know, the, the main piece is the serial killer stuff. That's a huge part of issue number two. The diatribes in the uh, in the thing are, um, you know, of course, now they find themselves part of the underground, and so they turn against it. They have the underground as a lie. Um, <laughs> he he writes, I hate women. She writes, I hate men. Right. That's what I remember you telling me. About. Yeah. It's like a, one of those onion uh, point counterpoint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they really talk about how – legitimately disgusted they are with the opposite gender, <laughs> yeah. and yet they love each other. That, I mean, that must have been fun to write. Uh, yeah, and he talks about, you know, like later in, in, in the intro to this, um, about how Debbie's stuff was, was really good, and he's like, I would like kind of like, you know, punch up a little bit of it, but like her, her really visceral hatred for humanity, he's like, I was just, she was such a great writer, and um, she wrote, the family must be eliminated, you know, babies are dirty, that would all be her... Um, but now they're living together and, you know, it's them against the world and Answer Me's kind of taken off and he's like, Debbie is so misanthropic that it's this commitment to negativity that, while so thrilling at the beginning, now begins to kind of like wear on you over time. It's like, instead, because you want to make, you're in love with the person, you want to make them happy and they're just steadfast in their nonstop mm -hmm. negativity. So then like, the... The marriage begins to disintegrate a little bit, and he starts looking for, you know, some sugar elsewhere. Oh. And hmm. the disintegration of the marriage starts being reflected in, in, the, mag in the magazine. The joy of cheating on your spouse. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 no, but just like how. How to fuck your wife's sister. <laughs> well, you know, you're doing, you're doing, say, uh, probably the most offensive magazine maybe ever hmm. in the early 90s, like we said, in yeah, yeah, early PC yeah. culture. And then you just feel like, oh, well, I'm going to raise the stakes every issue, too. So it gets more and more gnarly as it goes, right? So now 1993. So they do one issue a year? Yeah, but it's a big fucking issue, man. I mean, look how big that fucking interviews. book. That's, a, that's only four, that's only four zines. I, 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 zine culture, I'm still very naive to. So. Right. It's a big old, you get a big, you know, it's like how Chris Rock doesn't do an encore because he does a big ass show. <laughs> you know, mm. it's a big, long show. Mm. And it's going to take you a long time to get through. Like, the best scenes are like that, where it's like, you know, it, you, you read it a shit at a time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and Answer Me is very much in that thing. Ah. Because, I mean, if you're doing 100 serial killer profiles, I mean, think about that. Well, it's, it's, they're we, thick. Yeah, we haven't done 100 episodes yet, yeah. you know? Yeah. You God know? willing. God willing. <laughs> um, and if you listen to us while you're shitting, hey, keep, nice. keep pushing. Yeah. Deep breaths. But don't push too hard. So, yeah, the... um. The back of issue two is we're back. Are you going to kill yourself or do we have to do it for you? <laughs> and that's and a, a man cutting a man cutting his throat with a knife. And then you see issue two is it looks like Hitler nutting. Yeah. Uh, suicide perverts, freaks, guns. Hey. Uh, yeah, very, very suicide perverts, freaks. I, I mean, definitely. I, I love nutting. misanthropology. Mm -hmm. Misanthropology is very, very good. Yeah. And I mean, I'll give you an example later of of the kind of glee with which they talk about it, but um. They have, like, this huge list of their interns and people that work with them. It's all fake names because it's all just Jim and Debbie. and But it's such a big magazine. And they do the artwork, too? No, they'll, they'll get some of that. Mm -hmm. and an occasional writing piece will come from somebody else, but the vast majority is even the assembly of the magazines is done by mm. Jim and Debbie. It's not going to a printing press or anything. Wow. So um, in, in the third issue, uh, they have uh, tirades, nothing but enemies. I'm sure you can, you can uh, figure out what that is, which is um, – uh, people that are not them. Everybody, <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, yes. You turn me off about how non-sexual everyone is. The homeless can eat shit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they can. <laughs> yeah, and and, and, do. Yeah. and then Debbie does. I hate being a Jew because she's <laughs> yeah, Jewish. I hate, being, I 
Are you being a Jew? I mean, really, it's really funny. Um, music blows. Yeah, fuck <laughs> music in general. Shit, man, that you know, suck. and a lot of the, a lot of the you know the zines r- that are around at the time that be reviewing them are of course like punk rock zines and you know, but punk rock is kind of like the underground punk rock scene is like very much zine country. So of course, the biggest okay. zines are gonna be uh, you know uh, you know kind of cross reviewed by those, and. Um, you know, those those people don't really know how to take Answer Me because, you know, you kind of want it, but you're kind of like, uh, I don't know if this is cool. Right. Um, they ever do any reviews of anal cunt? It seems, yes. Yeah. It, it, this is the print anal cunt. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly what this is. Um, so they do, and this, uh, this is the third issue, too, and it's, again, getting uh, bigger and bigger. Um, they do uh, now 100 suicide uh, profiles. Uh, it's called 100 Spectacular Suicides, and that's where I found out about Christine Chubbuck. Mm-hmm. So, again... Issue two and three directly contributed to profiles. Mm-hmm. Um, totally happy to say that. Um, the kids of Whitney High, uh, palsied mongoloids poised for rock and roll <laughs> immortality. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> palsied mongoloids. It's, yeah, like uh, kids with Down syndrome doing music and stuff, and they're uh, no, no, they're enjoying that. Um, <laughs> that's, that's really great. They talk about too an occult fascist. Um, so it's like Boyd Rice, do occult fascists tie their shoelaces in, in little Nazis? <laughs> um, <laughs> underdog lady, self-appointed superhero unleashes a holy fury on depraved world and probably wouldn't appreciate comments about her vagina. <laughs> uh, interview with uh, Al Sharpton, he's black, he's proud, he has trouble fitting through doorways. <laughs> fat jo- he was fat yeah, back yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are all of the interviews they got legit? Yeah. Yeah, they're... they're uh, I mean, you can tell from the answers and yeah. stuff. It's uh, wow. I mean, they ask him legit stuff, you know. And sometimes they never fuck with them. Sometimes they do. Right. Um, so and then they talk to Jack Kevorkian on the phone. Um, and then they talk to somebody from Nambla. Uh huh. In this issue. Oh yeah. Hmm. If it's wrong to fuck little boys in the ass, how come there's an organization devoted to it? <laughs> <laughs> Strong point. Great question. What, are they talking about the Vatican now? <laughs> uh, so then Nambla. this is uh, the, the, the drawing, the illustration they have of Jack Kevorkian with the huge syringe oh, surrounded yeah. by dying people yeah. and him looking quite devilish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which actually, like, uh, looking at it now, I mean, not, not bad. No, that's good. Yeah, thing. yeah. It's, um, not even, I'm not even offended by I'm it. I'm not offended. So Debbie, Debbie gets I'm a hold of, of, of Dr. Kevorkian on the phone, you know, and... And this is really crazy because, you know, around this time I had uh, a, a painfully dying relative in, in my grandfather's house with Lou Gehrig's disease. And um, they would talk often in, in the home about how this Kevorkian was the only guy doing anything mm-hmm. to, yeah. you know, alleviate these people's pain. And, yeah. and it was so controversial and we, we've never had a figure take his place. Isn't that crazy? No. I mean, he, he was like the Ralph Nader of, of, uh, of euthanasia, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but and it, it's, I think it's uh, – you know he um, he died for our sins uh, in in a way because now uh, assisted suicide is is way more accepted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. California recently passed a law like last year, the year yeah, before. Or- or I think the- Oregon was probably one of the first. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, it's really it's really crazy that it was it was so um, kind of dropped as soon as he went to prison. He finally got caught on a technicality. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he went to prison. Some bullshit. Yeah. They, State they, lines or something. You, I don't know. Fucking ODing on oxys. But to have a like a responsible, medically administered passing is yeah. somehow a fucking crime. Yeah, it's because they can't make more money off you when you're dead. Right, right. So, so Debbie, in lieu of an interview, I guess Debbie decides to prank call him. Oh. And uh, Debbie's mom died of ovarian cancer, so mm. she calls up and she's like, um, "Is this Doctor Kevorkian?" Yes. <laughs> Hi, my name is Debbie Goad, and about three weeks ago, I was d- diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Uh huh. <laughs> I have an op- inoperable tumor in my ovaries. Where are you calling from? I'm in Hollywood. California? Yeah, my mother passed away in 1980 of ovarian cancer, and you know, she died a really painful death. She went for chemotherapy. Um, I had to clean up the vomit. It made her so sick. She died an agonizingly brutal death, and I've just been in so much pain. It hurts like a monster. And he says, you know, the difficulty is that there's no place to do it here. You, you, could, you can't do it. I can't help you in California, and here in Michigan we have to have a private home. It can't be done in a rented place. Wow. And she says, oh, yesterday they said something on the news about a couple in California. And he goes, yeah, but that was a private home here. And she goes, a private home, what do you mean? And he says, they had access to a private home here in Michigan. You have to have access to a private home. Do you have family, friends, or relatives in Michigan? 
And she goes, I'll come to see you. And he goes, I know. <laughs> and then she goes, I'll fly out. And he goes, but where's the house we're going to use? Like, they're just, like, locking it down mm -hmm. right away, you know? And she goes, I do have a girlfriend in Michigan. She goes, he goes, where? What city? And she goes, there's someone in Detroit. He says, well, make arrangements with that friend. Then maybe we can continue and see if we can help you. But first we have to have a place to do it here. And she goes, well, I'll contact her later. I was just wondering, does it hurt? Is there a waiting list? And he says, well, I can't talk about details. I don't talk about details on the phone. And then she goes, I have a shotgun right here, and I have ammunition. Pumps our Mossberg 12-gauge. Do you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And she goes, he goes, we have to wait and see. See, the law in Michigan takes effect April 1st. We have until April 1st. So it's been outlawed in Michigan, apparently, right, what he's doing. And she goes, I know, but you look like, you look like such a gentle man on TV. <laughs> What a bitch. <laughs> and he, goes, he goes, until they move the law up, they move the law up, just ignores it, right? You know, we don't have time, so blah, blah, blah. <laughs> she pumps the shotgun again. She's like, see, I have the shotgun right here. Do you hear this? <laughs> and he goes, I can't give advice on that. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, and I don't want to use it because it's messy, and my husband, he's the only family I have. And he says, what does he say about what you want to do? And she says, oh, he'll do it, too. I'm 39 years old. I don't have children. I have no obligations. I quit my job. I just need to speak to you if I could. And he, she, he goes, well, here's what you have to do first. You have to put it in writing, what you want, in a brief letter. And she says, to you? And he goes, I'll give you an address. She says, send it to you? And he goes, yeah, put it in writing, what you want, what your problem is. Uh-huh. Then if you've got any medical records with you at all, I want you to have a doctor's letter or hospital discharge summary signed by a doctor to verify your medical condition. Mm -hmm. So, again, just still locking it down. Yeah, like yeah, By the book. Assisted suicide roadie. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they go on, and, like, I don't want to read the whole thing, and uh, – she goes, doctor, will you hold my hand? Will you be with me? And she goes, he goes, you got to come with somebody. You can't come here alone. Your husband should come. And she, she goes, he will. Will you be watching a while? He goes, oh, yes, I'll be there the whole time. She says, is it normal to be scared? He goes, sure, sure. Don't worry about those things. <laughs> oh, God. I mean, it's a prank call, but it actually really humanizes him and yeah, makes his, the it, whole thing seem it like. It doesn't seem like a, a hit job. Yeah, and they just have like a whole discussion, and you know they say, "Okay, thanks, bye bye," you know. Oh, well, that's great. And um, so then they talk to uh, the overweight agitator Al Sharpton. Ah, the overweight agitator. That's and that is that's name. not really. They really talk about his. Um, you know, they like they ask him, "What do you what do you say to people that say that you're racist?" And um, you know, what was the first time racism affected you? And um, you know, how do you kind of like drum up attention for these like various causes? Because remember, he was kind of like you know single issue, single issues of, of, of racism around. Yeah. Al Sharpton would be the first guy to show up. You know, mm -hmm. he was kind of that inheritor of the the probably most nationally prominent black activist, right? Yeah, it was, so it was Jesse, Jesse Jackson, Jackson, Jackson and then Al Sharpton. Yeah. Jesse, Jesse Jackson had a good run for president. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he calls New York Jaime Town. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but, you know, Al, Al, Al gives like a great interview and um, it's not very long or anything. I, I expect a lot of this stuff is over the phone and stuff, but again, their ability to get through to people that obviously don't know what this magazine is. Right. That's that is is really so impressive. Very mm -hmm. impressive. Um, so then when they go into uh, the suicide things, you can see all these here. This is how they do it. And for every profile, there's hey, like I know that guy's face. There's like seven um, honorable mentions. So <laughs> it couldn't quite make the suicide <laughs> cut. So you end up getting basically like, you know, 250 suicide profiles, right. you know? Um so this is an example of the writing I'm doing with number 99, which is John B. Young, mm. of, of, of the writing that really gets you into their head about what they're doing. Suicide often seems to be a chronic loser's final bit at dignity, an attempt to wipe one slate clean by getting rid of the slate. <laughs> a person would hope that a life which had cut them no slack would at least allow them to bow out with a modicum of class. Life would allow no such luxury for John B. Young. He had once stockpiled large, stinking sums of lucre, as a Manhattan builder, but financial flushouts of the 1870s had greatly humbled him. In 1876, he tried slitting his throat in Chicago, but could only muster a flesh wound. In April of the following year, he vis visited his nephew's third floor New York office, complaining loudly about financial setbacks. Embarrassed by Young's in-office histrionics, the nephew tried to quietly escort his uncle outside. They had almost reached the street when Young ran back upstairs. His nephew chased him into his office, only to find that Young had jumped from the window. Now, if Young had merely splatted onto the street, at least he would have died in his chosen manner. But as a fiendish fate would have it, he landed on a steel sign rod which jutted up from the oh, sidewalk. Boy. Oh. The rod snapped under Young's weight, and his guts became impaled on it like a record on a turntable spindle. 
passing out through his back. Flapping about like a speared fish, Young slithered five feet down to his rod's to the rod's base. Oh god. A cop came by and tried to lift him, only to have him sink all the way oh, down again. <laughs> Young was by this time snow blind with pain. Oh. <laughs> the two men ca- two men came by with a stool and with the added leverage it provided were able to wrench Young's Young up off Young up and off the iron bar. Niagara's of blood were spurting (laughs) from the giant hole in his abdomen. He was taken by ambulance to Chamber Street Hospital, where an examining physician observed that the rod had fractured Young's pelvis, ruptured his bladder, and ripped through five different areas of his intestines. When death finally came to him, it was on its terms. Slow, torturous, and without honor. He should have called Gavorkin. Loser! (laughs) Isn't that amazing? That is... It is literature. All of no, it's it. good. It's good. It's good writing. Their, their, it's, their writing is 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 really impeccable. Now, what is, what was their history before, uh, the fate of hate brought them together, at this concert? Where what like what he is, was doing some writing. He uh-huh. was doing some stuff. I think for like a like a free weekly L.A. paper. Uh-huh. So yeah, I mean, it definitely has uh, a newspaper style to it. Yeah. Yes. Um. And like I said, they didn't know about the zine culture, and then they kind of like right. made a zine and then fell into it, and they right. became aware of it. Yeah. Um. And uh, you know, they uh they were just like into anything that was awful, mm-hmm. and they shared it, and they they were like we were really alone. We were like just in an apartment in L.A., and they talked about. I don't think incorrectly how L.A. can be a very alienating place. Like, everybody's Absolutely. from it, somewhere else. Everybody's doing their own thing. You don't have to ever interact. You get in your car. Mm-hmm. You yeah. go into your job. Like, it is a very alienating job. You, you right. know. never see the same person twice yeah. on the way to work or on the way back from work. Yeah, and it's not that people aren't nice, but everybody just is doing their thing, and there's less – you know, sense of community than other cities. Almost no one has like a local bar right. that everybody goes to after work. Right, or they nobody, all go to on the way knows home. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. yeah. It's the anti. Yeah, I remember when I moved here, and like the average person was just like they they were like, "Oh, welcome home," you know. And I was like, "Oh, wow, that's like really friendly and stuff like that." And I was like, th- th- "There's not bad intention, right. but it's just like people are just busy." Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, very self centered right uh, and there's not a lot of time for you unless mm. you can help me in some way get right. to where i want to go right every every city has attracts a certain type of person and right and um the west in general and, I, and la most prominently is a place where people go to reinvent themselves mm-hmm. yes yes and it's a lot run- of people running from something which yeah. jim says in it yeah um but you know like so is alaska you know what I mean? Oh, uh, without a doubt. Um, it, but uh, a la the great Wolverine podcast on Stitcher, Marvel. <laughs> yeah, season two oh, out now. Did you see are, are we in the plug? Yeah. Um, yeah, you played that for me, and I was surprised it was actually good. But yeah. don't listen to it. Listen to the show. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> Plenty of episodes. We'll talk about. Yeah, Wolverine. but but in, you know, Alaska, it's not like the the depravity and uh, the drugs and everything uh, is uh, much different. In L.A., it's it's much more exciting yeah. to be here and, and be depraved and do drugs or yeah or, or, or you know. um it is G- you given know, a choice yeah yeah and you know it, it's captured a lot at that time in falling down you know the city oh <laughs> yeah my very God, the yeah. city having um you can we know, can we do an Aaron explains for that fuck yeah I'll yeah. do falling down dude yeah falling down I'll um, dress up <laughs> without without uh without equal I would say uh, in capturing uh, the the villain's the main character <laughs> the city. And and, 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 and the and city, the city mm-hmm. and uh, I mean it's just like wh- 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 what is that? It, it's not a thriller, but it sort of is. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's and it's like uh, you're on his side for a lot of it because you're like, oh yeah, that does suck. Yeah, you know. Um, there is traffic, but it's it, yeah, there is traffic. There is traffic. Mm-hmm. Um, and they show you like how you know there's like the immigrant communities. And then, you know, the black community, which is very angry, especially in the early 90s, yep. um, justifiably. Uh, the, <laughs> yeah. um, how, how white the police force is at that time. Um, it later got much more integrated into many cultures because of what happened in the early yeah, 90s the specifically. Rampart, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and then, you know, the yuppies and the golf course. Mm-hmm. And they show all that really well. And L.A. is, you know, kind of the nation reflecting media back to itself, especially back then, before the Internet. 
L.A. was the center of whatever, yeah. music, movies, TV. It was all It kind is of... nothing but a mirror image. Right. It doesn't have any substance other than being a reflection right. of our most base. So them being here seems weirdly it, out of whack. But it's but, almost but they also, have to be. Yeah, exactly. They have to, be. That's, yeah. they have to they... be in the shit to write about it. Well, it's, yeah, they want to show you that dark side of it yeah. where it's like, you know, the they go to the spa and Rick and Morty and the... <laughs> You know, the healthy them are in the real world, and the toxin them are in the tank trying to get out. This is, like, the toxic, right. you know, yeah. part of, of the media that they're showing. There's a reason Guns N' Roses wasn't in Des Moines. Right, you know, yeah. There's a reason this magazine doesn't happen unless they're here yeah. among all yeah. the cesspool. And nobody's really spared unless you get to um, something that's so raw and horrible um, that you're in the midst of or, or has happened to you that then they respect you. Um, mm -hmm. so like in the, in the final issue, the one that got them the, uh, the ban, um, and, and, and kind of, uh, ban when you're an under, when you're an underground zine, who bans you? Well, it would be at newsstands and stuff because it was a good slick looking zine uh -huh. and, uh, zine culture got very big, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I bought my first copy of Maximum Rock and Roll at Borders and stuff. No shit. Yeah. Um, and they would kind of like defend how that was still okay. Mm -hmm. And it was like, relax, you know? They'd be like, people would like write and be like, why are you guys in Tower Records? And it's like, oh, whatever. You buy one issue and then you buy like a hundred independent punk records. Yeah. I think well, you can sell out for an issue. Yeah. Relax, you know? Um, I, but uh, getting canceled is kind of their Pulitzer, right? Yeah. Well, we also, finally did it. Yeah. they were also disintegrating as a couple too uh, now. Like I said, you know, it, it's, it gets bleaker and bleaker every issue and that reflects their relationship. Uh, and they do this thing after the third issue where they're getting such flack for everything they're doing from PC culture that they get a mailing address in Kentucky and they start a zine out of that mailing address that is attacking their zine. <laughs> and it's called Chocolate Impulse. And it's it's a they're uh they're an interracial lesbian couple. Chocolate Valerie Impulse. Chocolate and Faith Impulse. <laughs> And they do all all this shit where they they the main the main piece is tearing down Answer Me, and in the fourth issue, they reveal that they are Chocolate Impulse and and show all the reviews. That is of, wonderful. Yeah, but then they're doing a thing where think about this like they're they're doing a zine attacking themselves like this is the Panzeran part where it's like I deserve to die too. Yeah. So you have them making editorials about hating their own zine. It's brilliant. And. Part of it's joking, trying to get you to fall for it, but also part of it's real. Yeah. Like, and the one girl admits that she has a crush on Debbie Goad, and she wants she wants to like eat her out and stuff. Um. So they reveal that in issue four, but issue four is also the rape issue, and they have um, they have uh, kind of they do like a Teen Beat magazine interview with Richard Ramirez, <laughs> the Night Stalker. <sighs> and um, is that, it a real interview? It's a real interview. Yeah, he fills out a questionnaire and everything. Um, from jail. Yeah, from jail. Um, favorite sports: rugby, football, boxing. Favorite music: heavy metal. No surprise there. <laughs> <laughs> favorite actress: Samantha Strong. Favorite vacation spot: Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> favorite food: women's feet. Favorite color: red. Pastimes: hobbies: traveling and measuring coffins. Biggest like: cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest like. <laughs> biggest like. Hey, he, he needed to get out more it's or less. Biggest, I'm not sure the which. Biggest but. like. Biggest uh, dislikes: hypocrites, authority. What? Oh, he doesn't like authority. Uh, He's a serial killer. Lack of cocaine. <laughs> yeah. um, make a wish to have my finger on a nuclear trigger device. What are you looking for in a girl? Nice ass, good legs. Perfect way to spend a date: moonlit night, drinking rum at a cemetery. Describe yourself, asshole, and proud of it. I feel like that's a kind of understatement. Yeah, uh, he's an mm -hmm. asshole. Motto: Live each day as if it's your last. That's not a good uh, uh, selling point for that motto. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, but I, I think he believed it. Oh, yeah, he certainly <laughs> yeah, did. He, he that's certainly the problem. He walked the walk. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. So they do this, like, uh, what a honk, gorgeous teen idol, Richard Ramirez. <laughs> like, they're, they're <laughs> super gung-ho about it. They call it the nice stalker. Oh. Do you have what it takes to be Richard Ramirez's girlfriend? Do you prefer to be called Richard or Richie? And he goes, what's in a name? Are you seeing anybody right now? No, only in my dreams. What is something people would be surprised to know about you? That I'm a nice stalker? What kind of clothes do you like to wear? Jumps, jumpsuits with lots of pockets. 
Would you describe yourself as girl crazy? Yeah, but I don't have any time to wine and dine them. Not crazy, just lazy. If you like a girl, how do you get her to notice you? I pull out my gun. <laughs> I bought a gun. <laughs> how do you feel about being a teen heartthrob? Great. Keep the hate mail coming. What do you like to do for fun? Use drugs. What's one thing you would change about the world if you could? No more politicians or, for that matter, government. <laughs> oh, good, What's the good. one thing you change about yourself? Not a damn thing except where I'm at. <laughs> How has your life changed as a result of your success? Privacy is a thing of the past. Yes. What's your message to your fans? Keep your spirit strong. Mm. Isn't that nice? I mean, it, with, with the exception of a couple of those answers, it could have passed for, like, some Cosmo yeah. celebrity quiz without... This guy, I don't think he's really a serial killer. He seems like a... It's it's a pretty good send up of uh, of of shitty celebrity uh, right in there. Yeah, and the thing is, is that they had some stuff where people didn't really get where the jokes were, even though a lot of it was sincere. There was obvious things where people would be like, "Well, you know, they just didn't see the nuance," um, and they and they didn't care if you you didn't. Right. Um, the stuff in in the crosshairs by Faith Impulse, the the takedown zine they they uh, made. Um, they go, so far they covered murder and suicide. They've sympathetically interviewed racists. They've made fun of gay people everywhere with homophobic article about NAMBLA. It couldn't get worse, could it? Think again. Jim Goat is now bragging that the next Answer Me will be devoted to touching on the topic of rape. Jim, if you're going to make light about other people's suffering, I've got news for you, brother. There are a lot of us, especially women, who have been raped and kept down by pigs like you for far too long. We are the women of the night. If you're going to rub salt in our wounds and laugh about it with your beer buddies, we will find you someday and expose you to the same violence you dream about in your bedroom. Only this time it'll be real. Don't fuck with this Kentucky dyke, boy. <laughs> and that's written by them. Jim yeah, Goad. Yeah. It's written by Jim Goad. That that takes a uh, it's like real methodical introspection. Look at all the zine reviews of Chocolate Impulse, and I'm talking about how much they like it and how tough it must be to be lesbian interracial couple in Kentucky. Everybody specifically <laughs> talks about how good the writing is. Yeah. And they're talking about uh, the the favorite article uh, uh, again and again referenced by all the zine reviewers is pot smoking cunt licking lesbian Kentucky weekend. Woo! It does sound fun. Yeah, it sounds pretty great. Um, so yeah, they expose this thing at the end of issue four, uh, but they have they have a, a, a history of, of racist country and western music that's mm -hmm. in there again more more hatred. Um, uh, a hate article on cops. Nice. Um, one on uh, Chickatillo, how he killed 50 people, and what have you done with your life? <laughs> uh, so they talk about him more, you know, follow, follow, follow through on the, on the serial killer stuff. Uh, and in this issue, they include a rape board game that they made. Isn't that, is that right? Yes. And uh, that includes uh, all these cards. Oh, good. Again, like uh, public assistance. Yes. Public assistance. Shout, yes. out, to... shout out to uh, the Instagram. We got mentioned. Uh, somebody had a copy of public, public yes. assistance. Really? Yes. Oh, yeah, they mentioned that. just in it. Um, and so they, they actually do make a game that you can play with a fold-out board. And this was all included in the zine in issue mm -hmm. four. And cards that are predator and prey for the rape game. Great. Um, and it's... It's it's really fucked up. A lot of it is like you know saying that the prey is kind of like fantasizing about it and like mm -hmm. it, um, and you uh, you collect bullets as both predator and prey uh -huh. to like win. I think. Oh okay. Um, <laughs> At least it's even. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like I mean they really went through all this trouble to make these rules and everything. It's really quite insane. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, I can I can conceive of no reason why all of this work would have any issue uh, uh, breaking up the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, no, I mean, uh, you know, she's on board for all of it. It's really just when, like, you know, she finds out he's he's, uh, you know, cheating on her and stuff that Debbie kind of goes off the rails and, um, but I, but I, you surround yourself with so much, even though it's like a lot of it's tongue in cheek. You cannot surround yourself with so much negativity and 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 expect to come out clean. Yeah. yeah. Yes, exactly, and that's basically what happens to them. Um, she, uh, uh. He admittedly hits her uh, in some in some uh, like domestic violence things, uh, and then like he, they write about it. He writes about it in the in the intro. Uh, he's like, yeah, sometimes I would beat the shit out he of. He says him. he went to jail for for domestic abuse, and he's like he's like that wasn't true. He's like I hadn't hit her in years, and he goes uh, when they when they took my mugshot and everything. He's like I got scratches all over me. You know she's fucked me up. Uh, oh okay. Well, and uh, 
He goes. He ends up going to. He's gonna take like I think like fifteen years in prison. Then they get a hold of an audio tape of Debbie uh, saying uh, that she's she's uh, really gleeful about him going to prison and how she took an axe handle to the girl he cheated on her with and and uh, she's gloating about him going to prison for shit she lied about. And that was recorded. And so then he ended up still getting two and a half years, basically. Uh, in the midst of this, uh, Debbie had gained ovarian cancer. <laughs> oh, holy shit. Yeah. Are the you allowed look to... on your face right now, John, is like, uh, calling up Jack, huh? Hey, calling up Jack Kevorkian but... with a prank about having ovarian cancer. Can he kill you? And then you fucking get ovarian cancer like your mom did. Like, can you call him twice? <laughs> I think by then, yeah, I think yeah. by then he might have been in prison. Or no, he didn't go no, to prison. Until like late nineties, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I th- but by then there's probably enough laws passed by all these jackets. Yeah, like that interview was. I've always been kind of. I would not like on his side, but I always thought he was kind of maligned in a very, uh, uh, very puritanical way. Mm-hmm. And hearing that interview is like he's just being a doctor going. Okay, so you want to stop suffering. Right. Uh, these are the ways to do it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you know, the thing about, about Jack that's hard is um, he goes to prison, and he, he does, like, a lot of paintings of the Grim Reaper and stuff, which is like, stop, Jack. Yeah, yeah you're not helping your case here. I, and I, I really understand, you know, being interested in darkness and, and, and feeling like it's not that dark. It's just kind of a flip side of, of, of everything, and... Not feeling like it's it's really as evil and horrifying. But the main, the riffraff out there, the great unwashed, they don't feel that way about it. Yeah, he needed and, a marketing And department. you were, like I said, the fucking... Dr. Death. Yeah, you were the, the Ralph Nader of euthanasia. And a lot of people, like I said, in my family were very supportive of him. Yeah. Thought like he was doing, you know, God's work, you yeah, know, yeah. and... and or the Reapers. And not really lauded enough for it. I mean, he was. You I, know, think th- I think time had, had, has. I think people have come around. Willing to go to prison. Sure, uh, you know, you know, dancing around the law. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you can even become a fucking plastic surgeon. Yeah, you know, Th- those were self portraits, though. I think maybe by then he had <laughs> yeah. just like he he'd internalized it, where he's like he's fighting that fight, yeah. and he, he has and become he, death. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, the one. <laughs> Thing in Bill and Ted's bogus dream yeah? is when they were like, death wins Indy 500. <laughs> I didn't know I could run that fast. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. You might be a king or a little street sweeper, but sooner or later you dance with the reaper. Yeah. <laughs> dance, dance revolution. Hopefully, hopefully you win. God, Jesus, son. Check out Patreon episode. Check out Patreon episode uh, like ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aaron's breakdown. Aaron's Aaron's original. Aaron explains it all. Coming soon. That's that's a good one. And they're all back. They are all back for the threequel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very exciting. Sadler, William Sadler is back as Death. Yeah. Keanu Reeves. Yeah. It's really exciting. Alex Winter. The um, the the thing in the rape issue that I was the most I, holy shit about is an interview with Donnie the Punk. Who's that? Well, you know the word "punk" comes from like the lowest uh, prison. Yeah, the prison uh, bitch. Yeah, guy it's like there's swallows, it's just swallows the cum. Yeah, right? yeah, you're not. Huh, um, so, Punky Brewster is not a good name to give it. Because the 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 pecking order is like you know there's like the the girlfriends are above the punks. You yeah. know what I mean? And there's like kind of like a, a hierarchy of mm-hmm. of people that are. I don't even know if like consensually raped or something, but punks are just like. Yeah, well, I mean, I, it's I, that phrase a, itself is. A, 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 I mean, people are. Men are raped in prison, for sure. That phrase but, is totally wrong. You're totally right. That's, yeah, you know. But there is a hierarchy. A, a society emerges, and it, it, it yes. happens yeah. in caves. It happens in tribes. Lord it happens, of the flies. Yes. A, 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 people naturally fall into yeah. pegs and pegs and holes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and there are <laughs> there's the girlfriends and the sissies and, and like you said, yeah. the, the punks. Mm-hmm. Well, this guy, uh, Donnie the Punk, um, who ends up uh, testifying at the um, – the obscenity trial that Answer Me went through on behalf of Answer Me. Huh. Uh, he was a guy that was... Protest- was it in Florida? Uh, no, I think it was in Oregon. They had moved to Oregon. Mm-hmm. They moved to Portland by this stage. And uh, Donnie talks about he did a, a protest against the Vietnam War on the White House lawn, and they were arrested, and there was like a $10 fine. And he was like, no, I'm not going to pay it. Mm. And then he ends up in jail, and he's, like, playing chess with, like, G. Gordon Liddy, who's in jail for Watergate. No shit. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's 
fucking insane. Donnie the Punk is playing chess with G. Gordon Liddy? Yes, yes. But he's not Donnie the Punk yet, you see. He's just <laughs> Don, he's Donnie just the protester. Donnie. He'll, he'll be a punk. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, he goes, um, his lawyer's like, hey, man, just pay this fucking 10 bucks. You can get the fuck out of here right now. And he's like, no. And then the prison warden, who is this psycho named Cobb, uh, <laughs> Clinton Cobb, like the, the, the most copy name yeah. ever yeah. most like green mile warden yeah yeah, there's, yeah i mean there's no history of prison wardens or people named Cobb being psychos no. in this country yeah he he kind of named clinton he gets the idea he gets <laughs> yeah. the idea because he's with the white collar criminals donnie he gets the idea that donnie's there to like expose some shit for like a paper or something so then he sends him to the second wing and that's where the violent criminals are and then donnie um is like hey man i want to talk to you i heard you're a pacifist i want to talk to you about pacifism over here and he goes into some cell and there's like five dudes and they all just like butt fuck them and like you know make them suck their dicks and stuff it's not pacifism at all and yeah uh no, it's a pa- like a pacifier uh, and he, he talks about he, he's he's totally willing to talk about extensive prison rape this guy donnie the yeah. punk um and this is the kind of part where it's like you you see jim goad being like this is incredibly brave yeah, yeah. Uh, oh absolutely and you you had uh experiences nobody else in the world has really had like to the point where he's like uh he's rented out by a guy a prisoner Mm. and um just uh just extensively uh defiled but he's also he's got like an iq of 175 so he he comes out of it and he's you know still got this like zen attitude about the whole thing yeah and then he goes on some talk shows and he's he's getting like um (laughs) like kind of like hateful comments by women on like donahue type shows being like rape is our thing like this isn't for men and he's like yeah i don't even get mad about that like he's That's like horrible yeah yeah like really extensively extensively it, it's the one it's the one thing that, like if every, ha, ha, oh, you get butt fucked in prison ha, it's ha, kind of insane huh? yeah it's kind of it's kind of unacceptable right i mean if, one thing is the men are doing all the raping. <laughs> that's for that's sure. Been, been in essence, yeah. With, men, right, with, that's the, that's with, the pro- some, with some notable exceptions. Yes. It's very, listen, if women had dicks, they would rape too. <laughs> but, but that's not, that's not men, a t-shirt. Men <laughs> have all the dicks, so they do the raping. It's yeah. very bad. Yes. But a lot, of pe- a lot of guys are getting raped in prison, man, and it, people think it's fucking funny, and it's not. Well, that's the thing is that Jim Goat does think it's funny, well, and, he's and, a and and he's, he is a maniac, yeah, and, and and he's definitely gleefully excited to show you how horrible humanity is to this one guy because it proves his point. But it, it doesn't really, I mean, because because then when he goes to jail for two and a half years, he's like, yeah, he's like, there wasn't really wasn't that much rape. He's like, I never saw anybody even mm. talk about rape, and mm. he talks about how self policing prison actually was, and. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically if there's like a, 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 a racially dominant group, like a 70% black or white, that, that has a way of, of making things less combative. So mm-hmm. it, you kind of just adhere to whoever the dominant, you know, group is and they just don't want any trouble. It's like interesting. Yeah, it was, it's very interesting, but I think, well, I think in general, sorry, I interrupt you. I think no. in general, most be the status quo is usually pretty good. Right. Uh, but I also want to think like the warden was like. Oh, this guy might be uh, telling some truths. Better get him raped a bunch yeah. so he doesn't say anything bad about this place. Yeah. Like, that is like, Well, the thing is is that I think he's like, all right, well, let's scare him, and then he'll cough up the 10 bucks and fuck off, and he's just like, no. Oh, okay. The only thing he coughed up was... Uh, yikes. But, I mean, honestly, yikes. it's still no you move. It is. It's like, no, the Vietnam War is not right. I will mm-hmm. not give you $10. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will choke down all this cock. Yeah. In my ass, my mouth, all yeah, over the yeah, place. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're not getting my ten bucks. Not at all. What? What are you gonna? What are you gonna build, fuck it out of me? You, Go, gonna, keep looking. Yeah. It's not down there. What are you gonna fucking build a drone out of it, Cobb? <laughs> Kill a Vietnamese kid? <laughs> not on my dime, pal. No. Yeah. I'm not paying to bomb Cambodia. Yeah. Yeah. Three, yeah. yeah. Three hots in a cot. <laughs> yeah. And, and ten cocks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing fucking double oral, double anal every night. I think I'm going to like <laughs> yeah. doing hard time. I think <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this Hamilton if it's all the same. <laughs> is it, is it so, so, yeah, this guy this guy testifies on their behalf even when they go to the obscenity trial. And um, it's really a, a trial against the newsstand, not Answer Me. 
And the, and the newsstand is like they're they're told like you know they got the rape issue with the hot dog and everything on the stand, and they're like, oh, you, this is pornography, you can't have this. And uh, you know those 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 laws about you know uh, socially, dim- it's all in the eye of the beholder. It's yeah. totally mm-hmm. yeah. The, you know it when you see it. Y- yeah, but the First Amendment doesn't care what you see. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just like you can say and do whatever you want. Yeah. So of course they lose, and um, all of these lawyers that get involved with it, none of the money they end up getting like. Like millions of dollars, or whatever. None of the money goes to the goads. Um, it goes to the lawyers. It goes to the lawyer and the newsstand, and you know all these people that kind of like right. went. Uh, so was this? This was in the nineties, right? Yeah, early nineties. So this ninety one to ninety four. So this is after Larry Flint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this yeah. is also peak Tipper Gore. Yes. Right. Yeah. Labeling yeah. music. Mm-hmm. Parental mm-hmm. advisory. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Twisted Dean Snyder from Twisted Sister comes out. Yeah, <laughs> talks about being a Christian band. It's great. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Zappa was there for a lot of that shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Two Live Crew, the Unsung Heroes. That's right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, when they talk about the shit with like the Ghetto Boys and stuff, when they interview them, it's like you know he's really into just like how viscerally raw it is and how it's just so um, uncompromising and offensive. You know, um, he's just like he's into any of that. Yeah, and it, it gets back to that thing that you've said a bunch of times before. Is like anytime you hide something yeah it makes people want to find it more like well maybe there is something to that mm-hmm. right yeah 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 exactly you know why, why are you keeping that from me yeah and and, and, and and even if it's a joke like david duke let's still bring it up yeah like why why look, why give this guy any mystique like let's kind right. of like bring him out talk to him make fun of him a little bit yeah uh show how he's kind of trying to be like a 90s white power guy in a suit yeah you know um and then the Al Sharpton thing is just really like they don't really fuck with him at all. They're like, yeah, this guy always fucking shows up, shows up, yeah, and and does the the thing. And I think they have like one fucking jokey question where they ask him about his hair, right? And he still answers it genuinely and laughs, you know. Great. Yeah, I think there's a way to interview uh, certain people where you don't offer them the platform of equality. You just let them point out how fucking vapid and stupid their right, their right. actual let, beliefs are. Let them paint are. themselves into a corner, right? Yeah, because. It, you know, sunlight is the best disinfectant, right? Sure. Right. So if what they're saying or doing is so vile, it will be apparent. Yes. And laughable. Yes. Laughable. Like, yes. I mean, the, the reason I said that to you was where I, I always talk about the, the, the Holocaust denial should not be illegal in Aust- Austria. Right. Because an idea being illegal makes it so much more glamorous. Yes. If you have, you know, uh, just – Actions that are illegal, or, yeah. or you know, yeah. substances or right. whatever. Like, but one idea yeah. that you're espousing be illegal, yeah. it makes it seem so real. And in in, yeah. in in actuality, Holocaust denial is so stupid yeah. that it should be brought up and all the time ridiculed. Yes, all, you, yeah, all day yeah, long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, don't don't make it glamorous by having it be taboo. Yeah, yeah by but, the, 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 as soon as you outlaw flat Earth theory. Right. More people are going to be adamant that the earth is flat. Yes, yes. And then, you know, so when you outlaw it like that, then the people, there's not even a space for people to contradict it because it's not even in the open right. forum. And, and you know, I, I don't know if there's, there's not enough time for us to get into, like, how Twitter allows right-wing nationalists and, and racists to have a, the level of equality that... Uh, they should have the level of equality. Right, but but it, it it allows them in a way that legitimizes them. That is, I, I is, disagree. I disagree, and I I, I I feel like it's still laughable. It is, and, 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 and you is, should but, you should have Alex Jones saying dumb things. It should be, but I don't feel like there's any way that they dominate. I I, I like when they say you know every social media platform supports white supremacy. I'm like, no, it's just the First Amendment, and the First Amendment is the best weapon against hate speech. Right, right. I, they don't. I mean, they. I wouldn't necessarily say they'd support it but there's a certain level of allowance that because twitter is not as wide as it seems sometimes yeah and these sites aren't as wide as they seem and it people who are desperate get sucked into these narrow holes at times where because with twitter you can block all kinds of things uh-huh. just right. you, you, if, uh, you have you run the risk of echo chambers yeah. right but then what happens when you deplatform people is that they go to one that they go to another platform where then it's just them right so then you have this segmenting where everybody is in their own echo chamber of their own design oh yeah i mean do so, you, do you ever think to yourself what if i thought 
everything that's acceptable and normal was based on me always being on 4chan. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure, sure. Yeah. Like it's 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 really bad, but also yeah, I mean, the more taboo you make things like flat earth be- gained traction because it's just socially taboo. Yeah. Yeah. And people leaned into it harder. And it's going that way with the internet and and the more you fight like like the more you fight against it, the more that you say you know, every Nazi, you know, should be punched in the face. Like, all you're doing is, like, first of all, inciting violence, which they're a lot more into violence than you are, mm-hmm. liberals. So don't do that. Yeah, they have more guns. But also, just, we need to start talking to each other. Yeah. And, you know, we can't stay in our own echo chambers. Um, and you can't, you can't make any thought illegal. It's always bad. Yeah. It's always a bad idea. And I totally think white supremacy is a joke. I totally think Holocaust denial is a joke. Yeah. But keep it that way. Right. Don't make it this underground taboo thing. Don't make it seem cool. Right. Yeah, you, yeah, you have to bring it out. And uh, one shout out to Antifa cuz I think uh like they're actually like for better or worse, they they're like, "Well, we'll fight if they want to fight, we'll fight them." Sure. And so it's like, yeah, good for that. But also it's like uh, I think by by limiting the ability of these things to get out is it good or bad? And and and, and it, it the more they're out, then the more people can say that it's bullshit. Well, the thing is, but is that you you also can't let it affect you. You know, it is still sticks and stones for the most part. Mm-hmm. These, like a lot, like there it's, are there, sticks hurt. The, there are actions, right. you know, and that's that's and like, that's what that, they that's what they enforce. They that's enforce, a real thing. Yeah, but you just can't be like, you know. Think like you, you can't let them think that these things are going to bother you just because they say something, right? Right. You know, um, it you, you still have to just be like, kind of like, okay, I heard you out. Here's why I think that's dumb, you know. But like this idea that like you shudder in horror at like uh, you know anybody possibly thinking something and run away from it is a terrible strategy. Yeah. For the left. Well, I, I mean, I guess I uh, um in that sense it's like so Antifa is willing to fight with the people who want to fight. But there's another group of people who are who don't want to fight, and you can meet them at a level where you say you're fucking, uh, well, y- your your ideas are bad, and here's that. You don't want. I, I don't know if this is. You don't want to become. The, sorry, continue. No, no, no. I, I don't know. You uh, don't want to become fascist in your anti-fascism either. Right. And that's the thing is that like, you know, everybody's you know talking hard about like, w- whatever. But like, do you know how many reformed like white power people there are that are like, dude, I didn't know. I just grew up with assholes. I'm yeah. sorry. Well, yeah, yeah and then that's they're what I, never gonna come around from getting punched. Right, and that that's what the you know, and the internet allow offer you know, what? Am, but we're, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna turn the internet off because it offers a venue for for people to fall into white power. It also also offers a venue for people to discover that there's other lesbians that aren't in their community that they can. Well, right. You like, know, just for instance, right? Like somebody could hear this show, and they could post it to a forum. In uh, in the the dog pill shit mm-hmm. when we talked about the dog pill mm-hmm. stuff, oh, right. and they could get all riled up talking about how you know we're fucking scumbags or whatever. Mm-hmm. I'll still talk to those people. Absolutely, I will totally talk to you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And like, I'm just gonna tell you, like, dude, I'm sure you're probably underneath it all an okay person, but like, you got to get your head out of your ass, man. Yeah, dude. Like, you have to talk to these idiots. Yes. And not vilify them and right, not yeah. dehumanize yeah. them. Because that's you their don't... game. Yes, mm-hmm. they're dehumanizing women. Mm, the racists yeah, are dehumanizing yep. minorities. Yes, mm-hmm. don't come at it with their bullshit. Don't make, you know, never argue with a moron. People might not know the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't fall into their game. Yeah. 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 yeah because yeah, yeah, it yeah. makes you stupid. Yeah. You're being just as dumb now. You're going around talking about punching people. Like, no. And that's a lot of down. the a lot of the trolling is getting you to basically act like they are yes. and to legitimize them in that sense. Oh yeah, and then they use it against you on Fox News. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then they win. Yeah. So if you go on Bill O'Reilly, they're dragging don't, you down to their level. Don't yell like Bill O'Reilly yells. Act like the fucking adult in the room. Mm-hmm. Act like the adult in the room. Uh, yeah. I mean, we still don't even have that on the left. But there's somebody that's just like tough enough to not be stupid, but also not a belligerent maniac. We still have a lot of people that are like uh, an apology. And that's another reason people, you know, hate the. Oh, I mean, the fucking old Pel- the Pelosi uh, reaction to Leon Omar. Just like yeah. completely fine comments, and Pelosi's like, "Well, blah 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 blah." It's like just fucking stand up for someone for once. Yeah, I mean fucking... the the thing the thing with the the her criticizing the the APAC thing and the yeah, 
And then people have been saying that. Ever, all kinds of and people her, on, the, saying, on the left have been saying uh, that forever. Oh, it's all about the Benjamins, and it's like that's not that, because that's Jewish. That doesn't yeah. mean it's a money thing. It right. means lobbying works because of money. That's yeah. exactly yeah. And it's also and it's a, not a just Jewish people. From... Like you're making it racist. Yes. Yeah. Because you're you're taking that interpretation and going, oh, you're yeah. saying that because Jews and money. It's no. like no. No. no, you said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about political corruption. Well, how many? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. How much shit is just fucking projection? Everything yes. is just fucking projection at this point. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I talked about before the Howard Cosell thing where he yeah. got, oh, he jumped up like a monkey and, <laughs> ca- and somebody goes, well, that's racist as hell. It's like, no, he maybe, he, maybe he just did. <laughs> maybe yeah, yeah. he maybe he the actions like of a monkey. monkey. <laughs> yeah. You're saying because he's black, he's a monkey. <laughs> like, yeah. who's racist there? And then yeah. Muhammad Ali had to bail him out and get him back on the air. Do How- Howard. Howard Cosell. <laughs> you know about that? <laughs> we talked about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because he bailed out Muhammad Ali about the the, uh, the Vietnam thing. Yeah. And then later on, Muhammad Ali was like, eh, "This guy's not fucking racist. He's my, my friend Ali." But so about about the echo chamber and about everything else. Now, pre-internet, that's something I wanted to talk about, which was you had a more manifesto y thing, as evidenced by the underground publishing, right? So I feel like there was more unique. And crazy voices without the shared consciousness of the internet, right? Mm-hmm, yeah. Well, it also it selected for um, a, a, a more ambitious person or, or group of people to do it because there's a barrier. There's a get up and go. Yeah, on the internet, you type it, you, you clack a few keys, you don't exactly. have to put your fucking pants on. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You don't have to move out of your mom's basement. I mean, think about I'm going to put out the first issue of Answer Me. You it's going to be a whole. Big zine it about how I hate time. the world yeah. and people suck. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I announced that in the introductory editorial. It's answer me, yeah. why are you so stupid? Yeah. I legitimately hate you, the reader, mm-hmm. all of you. And I want to make that and sell that. Mm-hmm. It's and really- then we get fans. Yeah. And they don't understand we still hate them. Yeah. What was he doing for? What were they doing for like normal money? Because they couldn't have been making that much money off of it. Uh, I think it was pretty, pretty like regular job stuff. But then, the, then the, the magazine did end up supporting them. Oh wow, um, that's crazy. Yeah. It is. Um, in in the 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 fallout category though, when you talk about the people that are 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 reading, and you know sometimes this show can attract some colorful individuals. <laughs> Isn't that right? You can imagine what answer me would attract. Mm. So there was a guy who shot at the White House. Uh, Wait, yeah, what's his name? Francisco Martin Duran nope. shot at the White House in late 94, and he left a note in his van which quoted a line from Answer Me Number 2, mm. which was, Can you imagine a higher moral calling than to destroy someone's dreams with one bullet? <laughs> I mean, I guess I could, but uh, I see what he's going for. So I couldn't put it. He didn't, leave it, he didn't, he didn't leave in the next line, yeah. which shows the jokiness of the writing, which was, Murder is the ultimate icebreaker at cocktail parties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, see that that's, that's good. funny. That's good. The, th- the there was another uh, scandal which was um, uh, the uh, there was three British kids in the U.S. that were allegedly stalking Bob Dole, and <laughs> uh, <laughs> fucking losers. Yeah, Clinton, <laughs> Clinton versus Dole. And um, st- stalking <laughs> Wait, Bob that's, Dole. That's real. Yeah. Um. And they they all committed. Gotta, they I all, gotta find that. They all committed suicide. Oh. Geez. Um. And uh, why? Because he wasn't hot. He wouldn't fuck him. He wouldn't. <laughs> what the f- None of that makes any. Three fun. weeks they later, have, they have posters of Bob Dole on them. <laughs> three <laughs> weeks later, there's a, a this Tiger Beat interview. <laughs> three weeks later, there's a note that comes through, uh, the mail, and uh, it says Jim and Debbie. You can't reply. I'm dead. This is the <laughs> m- this is the money I had left. Oh, man, I knew that if you had it, you would use it to contribute to your good, and not the greater good, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the lady. common good. If you didn't want it, if you don't want it, don't take it. Um, for me to explain everything in a letter is futile. I acted. Yeah. I'd have thought explaining to someone else would wouldn't do any good. I'd be alive and stupid. Right? Yeah. So they get it's like three uh, money orders of $700 each to Jim and Debbie Good. Mm-hmm. And he goes, Debbie wanted to keep it. I was like, no way. I sent it back to her folks. Um, huh. And then uh, there was also <laughs> the guy that did the Hitler cover for Answer Me Number 3. The, the uh, He goes, um, he's like, I worked for Fanographics in Seattle. And he said he used some uh, comics and Answer Me to get behind stage at the last Nirvana concert in Seattle. And the centerfold of the suicide issue was the picture of a guy, an actual picture of a guy with a shotgun between his legs sitting on a couch with his head blown off. 
And Jim says that he saw Kurt and Courtney reading the suicide issue on a couch about two months before Kurt blew his head off with a shotgun. I mean, he probably also read, you know, like, New York Times. He'd become a journalist. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so it was like, you know, Debbie getting the ovarian cancer, uh, these ties to a guy shooting at the White House, these Mm -hmm. uh, four suicides, three men and one girl. It was like this was the the fame fallout of of Answer Man, Mm -hmm. what also led to them kind of, like, stopping. And plus they, you know, died and went to jail. Uh, Jim got out uh, in two and a half years, and then he became. Um, but that way, Debbie died from the. Ovarian. Debbie died from oh, the ovarian man. cancer. Jesus yeah. Jesus Christ. Really, don't, really. Don't, don't prank Jack Kevorkian. See what happens. Yeah. Um, so he wrote a book called "Shit Magnet: Woman's Abil- Miraculous Ability to Absorb the wor- Absorb the World's Guilt." Um, <laughs> oh, Christ complex. <laughs> yeah. Much? Come yeah. On. Uh, a lot of it is, yeah. The Redneck Manifesto in 1997, that was actually kind of a big hit. Right, I remember I've heard of uh, that. The yeah. New Church Ladies is his 2017 book about the... Uh, oh, he's still alive. The extremely uptight world of social justice. Oh, so, very yeah. interesting. Like I said, he just like he's like leaning a little too hard into the ignorant hillbilly thing. and When you say the ignorant... I mean, he, he's writing about them as, as they... As scapegoats? How they're, they're the acceptable scapegoat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right, right. Because you know, women, minorities, right, right, right. You know, homosexuals. But if you're if you're just a poor white guy, it's acceptable to shit on you. Right. Um, and I don't think that's wrong, but it's also like he's leaning really hard into it. Yeah. I mean, like you know, do we all suck or not? You know, are now you the champion of this? Right, right, right. Well, at least you know the 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 logic there on on the haters' side is that at least they're white. Right, but I mean, yeah, he's and he's also he's doing it because it's the hard argument to make. You can see through the history of Answer Me, mm-hmm. the whole point is about making the asshole argument. Right. Yeah, the punk um, stand. No matter what. Yeah. yeah. You know, matter if it's, if you're talking to Al Sharpton or David Duke. Mm-hmm. You know? He sounds like, well, he's a social justice warrior. It's just that he's a warrior uh, against social justice. Right. I mean, he, you know, he just talked about, like, the, the idea of, you know, and it is it is true about PC culture, or, or certain... Certain ideas are intolerable, and it's like what you always say, Aaron. How are we going to talk about it if we don't talk about it? Like if it's bullshit, it will out itself. Yes. But you can't be afraid to talk about uncomfortable things. Right. Right. Um, And if you are, then people get kind of angry, and that makes them Trump voters. Yes. Because they feel like, wait a second, I'm not even allowed to talk? Yeah. I don't want to do that. You know, I'd rather somebody be a huge asshole that says whatever he thinks because at least he's able to talk. Yeah. And it, I really do feel that that plays into that. And and there is too much uh, apprehension about the First Amendment on the left. You know? It's, yeah, well, because everyone's in a contest to see who's the most woke and, and yeah. pure. And you know what would make us more woke? Talking, Talking about it. Talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, and, it, and you should be the most woke. It is a good trick that uh, you know, as one side builds up their walls, you know, the other side is like, well, I, I have to, we have to build up ours in order to fight them. And mm-hmm. it's like, yeah, maybe, maybe there's a way we can drag. You know, there is a middle ground still, and you know, I don't there's, know. There's it, nuance. It, there's gray areas. It's complicated. Like, I mean, you know, is it stupid that the middle-aged white man? is uh, feeling like the country is slipping away from him. Yes. Yeah, because they've been feeling that for fucking 120 years now. Or yeah, but shit. it's stupid. Ever since we let, they we think, let go of the slavery, we, we got rid of slavery, they've but been feeling that. But it's because they that. think it's going to black lesbians and not right. CEOs that you don't see because they live on fucking desert islands. Right. right. That's what it, makes it, it stupid. Yeah, it's not slipping away from them into the lower No, it's class. slipping up. Uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's being snatched away yeah. by yes. eight dudes. Yeah. Yes, and you're defending their right to snatch it away from you. Because you think that because, you might be them one day. Yes, and you also are mad uh, that people are, are not as sympathetic to you because you have had white privilege. Right. And I understand how that's an inflammatory thing to sure. people that are like, I'm a fucking, like, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so poor and dumb yeah. that I, what privilege? Like, I, yeah. I understand how yes, that's yes. aggravating to hear, yes. but you got to get woke. You got to get, you got to, you got to figure out that, like, it sucks for people worse than you. You got to fucking figure that shit out. Yeah. And you also have to figure out you've been getting butt fucked. By these people mm-hmm. that have been stealing everything from you slowly over the course of a generation. And that's why suicides are up in middle-aged white men. Because they're like, I've, I've done less than my father did. And it's like, 
your father had more resources because yeah. the government was more helpful. Yeah, more, yeah. And then we slowly convinced you that it was all going to uh, Brown transgendered people. Mexican fucking, you know, like, it it's cripples. all bullshit. <laughs> it's all bullshit. Mexican the whole cripples. public assistance board game. Yes. All of that yeah. bullshit. And that's by design. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. It, divide and conquer yes. is the only way to win for these people. It, and they know how to do it. They've been doing it for millennia. Yes. And it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, and because we're, uh, we're visual creatures. It's just so much easier to be like that color right. person. But is in the, the era of instant communication, yes, it should have made us more woke. And it instead, have. it's been weaponized against us. It's been yeah. it's been used against us, and it put yeah. us into echo chambers. And we should have been having a cross cultural understanding, and uh, we we didn't. We we got fucked. Yeah, again. Can we do it? We're all stay tuned we're to all find all out. Billy the Punk. <laughs> but anyway, answer me. That answer me. I would I, love fantastic. to read yeah. it. Yes, it's like if Mad Magazine was real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's really, really fucked up. Really dark ends for the writers. Um, but yeah, that much hate, man, is uh, is poisonous. Yeah, yeah. Um, but did a bunch of good come out of it? Kinda. You know, I guess. I guess. I, guess. I mean, there's, there's, you know, John, there's, you get a lot of good, uh, good profiles. John episodes. B. Yeah. John B. Young. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a really just crazy thing where you're like, I just can't believe I'm holding this in my hands, reading this insanity. You know, this dive down a most extreme person's mind. Uh, like what is that? You know, like it's not trolling because it's genuine. Yeah, yeah, the, it's sincere. Uh, yeah, a, a sincere self-loathing that's executed so eloquently is is very something some very special. Yeah, because it 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 also betrays some form of sensitivity and understanding, right? How oh, can you, how can yeah. you write that? It's well, it's coming with zero understanding <laughs> of the human condition, but at the same time, a perfect understanding of yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, it's uh, there's something. You, you put that put that in a time capsule, John. Yeah, right. Oh, that'd be a really good time capsule. Yeah. Charlemont yeah. Mass. Yeah. yeah. Let's let some fucking aliens <laughs> find that. Let's get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right. I'm gonna say good night. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Joseph Peter. Mapperso. We love you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.